1.5 circles. So we need to talk about circles. Some of this might be familiar, some of it may be new, so I'll try to do my best to be clear. Um, fancy definition. A circle is a set of points in the xy plane that a fixed distance r from a fixed point hk. So hk, fixed distance r, that would be called the radius, and all these points on the circle are that same distance. Okay. The standard form of an equation of a circle with radius r with a center at the origin, sorry, is x squared plus y squared is r squared. And so here is a circle with a center at the origin with uh, the radius equal to 1. Now where the x squared plus y squared comes from should, hopefully I can show you that. So let's say I'm again on, that, on a point similar to what we just saw a moment ago. So we are at this point here. The lines that I just drew, that distance is 1. And if you look at that point, if this is x and that is y, then x, y would be the coordinates right here, right? Okay. Well, that would be a right triangle. So right triangle trigonometry, or in this case, uh, Pythagorean theorem, would tell us then that x squared plus y squared has to equal 1 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals one. So there you go. There's the uh, standard form of a circle with a center at 0, 0 and a radius of 1. If this one was 4 or 5 or 20 or whatever, then we would just you know square that. So let's just make it 4 for the time being. Let's say that was 4. So this was 4, negative 4, etc. Then 4 squared would end up giving you 16. So still standard form. The center is at 0, 0, 16. So the radius would be the square of 16. Um, if the center is at hk, then minus h and minus k ends up being the way that you write this. And that's based just on a translation. So that's based on translations. So you are shifting the center from 0, 0 to hk. And this looks a little bit like quadratics, in that if you think about, you know, when we did this quad with quadratics, so we first started with that was the most simplest form, but, you know, at some point we ended up with quadratics that look like this. Then the vertex, which is, you know, similar to the center, right? The vertex here would have been at 2, 3. So that would be the vertex, based on the vertex form of the quadratic, with a shift of h, 2 and k at 3. Okay? Um, so let me connect this one other way to what we just saw. So if I now look at what I have over here again one more time, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, I need to create a little bit of space. So there. So I could write that as x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals r squared. So the center here would be at 0, 0. Okay, so now it's similar to the h and the k that we see over here. So write the standard form of the equation of the circle with a radius 4 and a center at a negative 5, 2. So that is h and that is k. So then we're going to do x minus h. So minus h would be minus h would be a negative 5 squared plus y minus k, and k is just 2, equals 4 squared. Then we would clean that up a little bit, so we'd write x plus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Well then, how do you graph that? Next question. And find the intercepts as well. So how are we going to graph that? Um, <coughs> Well, if the center is at 5, negative 2, then I should be able to draw that on the coordinate plane. So let's make that first. So negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 2. So there's the center. Now remember that the radius was the square root of 16, which is 4. That means every point has to be 4 away from here. So we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to find 
a dot that is one, two, three, four away in this direction, and then one, two, three, four more up, so I can go one, two, three, four up, and then one, two, three, four this way, so I can go sideways to the left four, and then one, two, three, four, so then I should be there. So then my circle, and circles are somewhat challenging to draw, should look a little like this, right? Okay, um, and I can't do much better than that, so I'm just going to leave it as a dotted line. You should try to, you know, follow the line like this. I don't want to go too far, and I guess I'll try to finish. All right. Okay, so find the intercepts. Well, on the y-axis, I don't see any intercepts, so I can say that I have no y-intercepts. Okay. Uh, the other way that you can do that is you could say, well, what happens when x is 0 and solve for y? So if you plug that in, you would get 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared is supposed to be 16. So 25 plus y minus 2 squared is 16. And y minus 2 squared will never be equal to negative 9, so no y-intercepts. Okay? The x-intercept would be when y is 0. So I have 2 but I need to be able to find it. So if I make y is 0, I end up with x plus 5 squared plus 0 minus 2 squared is 16. Um, x, sorry, plus 5 squared, 0 minus 2 is 4, or 0 minus 2 is a negative 2, so that's 4. So that's 12. And then I take the square root of this. So the square root of that would be x plus 5 is the square root of 12. So that means that one x-intercept is at, uh, bring the, f sorry, plus or minus 12. So one x-intercept is at a negative 5 minus the square root of 12. But the square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3, right? There's a 4 in there. So minus 2 square root of 3, comma, 0. And the other one then would be at a negative 5 plus 2 square root of 3, comma, 0. Okay, so this is the second one. It's closer to 0. And this is the first one that I found. So this one is over here, and this one is over there. Okay. All right, what else? So second way that we can look at circles would be through the general form. That's when we have everything sort of uh, outside of the parentheses and ordered in terms of degrees. So our squares first, then our first degrees, then our constant, and then equals 0 over here. So you would have to complete the square to be able Uh, to find the equation of that circle in terms of, so that we can graph it, actually, sorry. So what are we going to do first? Well, I'm going to first rewrite this so that the 10x goes with the x, and then y squared minus 4y is over here, and then the 13 is just over here. Okay. Completing the square would have meant that I would have x plus 5 squared to be able to get the 10x. But if I write x plus 5 squared, keep in mind that x plus 5 squared would be x plus 5 times x plus 5, I would get x squared, 5x twice, so that's great, 10x, but I get an extra 25. So I need to balance that 25, right? So um, I usually balance it on this side, so I'm going to add an extra 25 on the right, so it's 0 plus 25 here, plus y minus 2 squared. Okay, if I, so I added an extra 4 here, so plus 4 there, and then the 13 should be over here, so I'm going to subtract 13. So what do I get? x plus 5 squared plus y minus 2, so we had 0 plus 25 plus 4 is 29, and 29 minus 13 is 16. And then I need to graph that. Well, I already graphed that, didn't I? So that's exactly uh, the same equation, so this equation over here. is exactly the same circle as this one over here, just written in a different form, right? x plus 5 squared plus y minus 2 squared is 16, and after I completed the square, I ended up with the same thing. Okay, last problem. 
find the general equation of the circle whose center is a negative 2, 3 and whose graph contains a point 1, 4. So how do I know that? How do I find that one? So there's more than one way to do it, but uh, so the center, so that's H, oh, sorry. So that's H and that's K. So you can start by writing this, X minus H, so X plus two squared, plus Y minus K equals, and then this should be the radius squared. Well, one way that you can solve this is to say, well, that's an X and that's a Y. So if this is the right equation, then when I plug in X and Y, it should work. So let's just see what that means. So if I plug in X and Y, then I end up with only one variable, don't I? So I should be able to figure out what R squared is. So 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And 4 minus 3 is 1, squared is 1, so R squared is 10. So that does mean that the radius would be the square root of 10, but I just need to find the general equation. So the general equation would be, uh, well, got to do a little more work than I thought, don't I? So at that point, I can at least say x plus 2 squared, y minus 3 squared equals r squared, and we just figured out that r squared was 10. I'll make sure that I write the general form. So in the general form, I need to multiply everything out and make it say 0 over Okay, so i got a little work to do. So squaring that would give me x squared plus 4x plus 4. And that gives you y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 10. And then write it in the order that they want me to do it. So x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y. Now let's see, what do we have? 4 plus 9 is 13. And then the 10 needs to come over, so... 13 minus 10 is 3, so plus 3 equals 0. And then this would be my final answer. All right, thank you. Uh, one note, if it still says homework underneath here, keep in mind that uh, at this point, you're just doing problems mostly in class. So you know, just do these problems when you come back to class. If you've already worked ahead a little bit, odds only, and then just do this part, so I don't need you to do all of the parts that I listed there. Okay? Thanks, guys.